Okay, so we're looking at the next video, uh, motion in a straight line with a constant force. So for motion in a straight line, uh, we have acceleration, velocity, and displacement that we can be looking at. So A, V, and S. Uh, A, V, and S can have plus or minus signs to indicate direction, but we don't have to write them as vectors. So copy that and come across. Okay, so we've got a number of standard formulas that you've may or may not be familiar with, so we just have to put these in our notes that we're going to use. Um, so the number of standard formulas exist for motion with constant force. So V equals U plus AT, S equals UT plus a half AT squared, V squared equals U squared plus 2AS, and less less common but still useful, S equals V plus U over T, so averaging the, the two velocities at times per time. V is final velocity, U is initial velocity, A is acceleration, T is time, S is displacement. Okay, so copy that and come across and we'll look at some examples. Oh, and also sometimes it's convenient to know that if you're moving at one meter per second, that's the same as 3.6 kilometers per hour. Okay, let's look across next example. Okay, so a car traveling at 80 K is brought to rest in 50 meters. The brakes are applied uniformly. What's the deceleration experienced by the car and find the time taken for the car to stop. Okay, so we've got speed kilometers per hour, but then we've got distance in meters. So we've got to convert. So the first thing we need to do is uh, 80 divided by 3.6 equals 22.22. So that's the speed in meters per second. Um, and then we have V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Okay, at the end it's 0, so 0 squared equals 22.22 squared plus 2 times A. And it took 50 meters to do that. And so when you solve the equation, uh, divide by 100, you end up with minus 4.94 meters per second squared for the unit for acceleration. Okay, in part B, find the time. Well, S is V plus U over 2 times T. Um, so we've got T, to change the subject, 2S over V plus U, which is 2 times 50 over 22.22 plus 0, and that gives you 4.5 seconds. Okay, so that's the first example. Copy that, come across. Okay, next example. A stone is thrown vertically upwards and is seen passing a point 10 metres high three seconds after being thrown. What was the initial velocity? Okay. So we use S equals UT plus a half AT squared. The displacement was 10. U is what we're trying to find. Time was 3. Half is a half. Um, now, Acceleration due to gravity, just in case you not didn't know, was, is minus 9.8. So that's an assumption for gravity. So that's minus 9.8 meters per second squared. So sometimes in some books they just make it minus, not minus 10, but we'll make it minus 9.8 to be accurate. Uh, times 3 squared. So uh, 3u equals... 10 plus a half times 9.8 times 3 squared and then just divide through by 3 and that gives you 18, about 18 meters per second. Okay, that's the end of the example. Let's have a look at one more. Okay, cyclists traveling at a constant speed of 18 meters per second past a truck. Okay, so we've got <laughs> so there's a truck there and the cyclist goes past it and then the truck starts chasing it, accelerate uniformly at 0.4 meters per second for 20 seconds, and then, then it goes at constant speed. How far will the truck travel until it reaches the cyclist? So the cyclist is going on, and then the truck's accelerating, and then goes at constant speed, and then catches it up. Okay, so let's have a look at what we're going to do. Um, so we've got different speeds. So the cyclist was going at uh, 18 kilometers per hour so we divide by 3.6 so the cyclist is going at 5 meters per second okay um, so after um, 20 seconds 
the cyclist has gone 100 metres. So we know that that's where, they had that's where the truck is starting to chase. Um, so after 20 seconds, the truck, um, so we're going to use, um, we're going to use UT plus a half AT squared. So we're just going to try to find out where the trucks, the dist where the things are after 20 seconds. So that's going to be zero plus a half times 0.4 times 20 squared. And so that gives us 80 meters. So at this stage, um, after 20 seconds, when the truck stops accelerating, there's a distance, um, a difference of 20 meters. Um, the truck speed uh, is going to be u plus a t, so 0 plus 0.4 times 20. So at that stage, the truck is at 8 meters per second, and that's what its speed's going to be. Now, the relative speed of the truck. So the truck's going at 8 metres, the cyclist is going at 5 metres, so the difference between the two, so the relative speed is five meters per the 3 metres per second. Um, so the time needed, there's a 20 metre gap between the two, and the truck is catching up at three meters per second so it's going to take six and two-thirds seconds to catch up um, have we answered the question though how far will the truck travel until it reaches a cyclist so um, so the truck has gone six and two-thirds seconds times eight meters um, which gives us 86 of 48, uh, 53 and a third meters. So the total distance for the truck and the bike and the bike for the set will be 80 plus 53 and a third. So the truck has gone 133 and a third meters, all up. Okay, and so has and the, so has the bike. The bike's at the same spot when they catch up. Okay, so there'll be an exercise on Moodle for that one. Okay, bye.